in this little segment what I'm going to be doing is generating some tones sine wave 100 cycles per second length of one second let's generate that tone you see it here but I'm going to expand the time scale so that we can see the waves as they are and here you'll notice the time scale is one second and I have exactly one second worth of this tone now what does this thing sound like well I'm going to position the cursor back to here did you hear that it's really kind of low let me turn it up so now what we're going to do just for the heck of it we will generate another tone this time we'll make it twice the frequency 200 cycles per second that's 200 Hertz that's not what I wanted to do what I wanted is not to have my cursor position on there but down here outside of it so that when I generate this tone I will get a second bar down here now I've generated that tone but once again let's expand the time scale here so we can see what's going on isn't this interesting here we have let's go right back to the beginning here we have in one one hundredth of a second here we have one cycle that's one alternation of a sound pressure wave here because we have twice the frequency in the same time period we have two of these cycles now here's something else we can readily do with audacity as kind of a tool for learning this stuff I have a mute button on each one of these if I mute both of them they both gray out and I wouldn't hear anything if I played something but if I only mute one and let's mute this one let's mute this one right here and unmute this one so the top one will play that's the one you've heard already let's mute the top one now the lower tone let's unmute the higher tone and that's kind of interesting isn't it now if we played both of them let's do that yeah, may not sound all that different it is in fact different but now what I'm going to do is to combine these in a way that you can see what's actually happening I'm going to put them both together notice these are both monaural that means only just one channel what I can do now if I save this and I'm just going to export it as a wave file notice the message here your tracks will mix down to a single mono channel in the exported file well that's exactly what I want so I'm going to save this file and I'll put it out here just as I'm going to label it as 100 Hertz and 200 Hertz because Hertz in honor of Hertz the fellow who did a lot with the invention of radio and radio waves in the 1800s before Marconi we use his name for cycles per second so I'm going to save that it saves very quickly now I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to open up audacity again and I'm going to go find that file that I just saved well let's see if I can find that file that I just saved and it's this one right here so let's open it up now when I expand the time scale here you're going to see something very interesting look at that wave it's not the sine wave anymore it's the actual combination how the two waves at 100 Hertz that is 100 cycles per second combines with the wave the strength of the wave at 200 cycles per second and this is the composite wave that comes out when I play this I get that composite sound but let's do something interesting here even more interesting than this let's generate another tone now and I'm going to generate this tone and I'm going to make it 400 oops a daisy I'm going to make it 400 Hertz 
same length of uh, same duration here one second and I'll make the amplitude 0.4 that's the height of the wave because we're adding these waves together if I started out with each of them at maximum height I would get an unfortunate phenomenon here where the tops of the waves would be cut off that's called clipping so I'm going to generate this tone now notice here in one of these increments here that's a hundredth of a second now I have four waves because I have 400 cycles per second. What happens when I play both of these? And let's play both of them. And you could tell that there's a louder sound in here. I'm going to mute this one now. Let's just play the higher tone. And that's already sounding pretty high, but it's only 400 cycles a second. Let me do something else now that's going to be kind of strange. I'm also going to generate one more tone. And this tone, I will make 440 cycles per second. Now that's a tuning note. That's A in the middle of the piano keyboard. And that's usually what the instruments tune up to in an orchestra or in a performing group. So I'm going to generate this tone also. Well, I did it wrong again <laughs> because I didn't set my cursor down here outside of either one of these. So let me do that so it's outside. Now I'll generate that tone. All right, 440, amplitude of 0.4, one second. Generate that tone. And here, now let's expand the time scale so that I can see it in more detail. You'll notice that these two bottom ones are very close together because in fact, in this one second, we only have 40 cycles of difference. That's not really too much, but these are not actually congruent they are of a different frequency and they're going to clash. They're going to clash in an ugly way. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mute this one and these two are not muted. Let me see what happens when I play 440 and 400 together. Now that's kind of a strident, insistent sound. If I mix all three, that's 100, 200, and, four, and uh, 440 together, excuse me, that's 100 and 200 in this waveform, that's 400, and then I have 440 here. And let's reduce the size of just this slightly so you can see what's really going on here. That composite waveform from the first, and then these two slightly different frequencies. When I play this, it may sound kind of bad. I'd say that's kind of ugly, that sound. You might want to make an ugly ringtone out of that. Well, I'm not going to try to do that. But what I will do is this. I'm going to now mix all three of these together by outputting these three as a single mono file. So I'm going to go once again here. I'm going to export it as wave. They're going to get mixed down to a single track. And this time I will say in a more shortened form what the name of this file is. It's 100. It's got 200. It's got 400 and it's got 440 all mixed together. So I'm going to save that. Apparently I've already done that once. I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to get out of here. And now when we take a look at this, and I'll do this the same way, I'm going to get into Audacity here. And I'm going to go look for this file. And let's see if I can find it. And let's somewhere out here. Here it is, this one. Now, this waveform is probably going to look fairly ugly. And in fact, it does. You'll notice it really has kind of a strange shape to it because this is the combination of four different sine wave patterns. Now, what we're looking at here is interesting in another way. Notice right here, the top of this wave seems to be flat topped off. And it's flat topped off here too. And in every other place where that, that congruence of signals, that convergence of signals occurs, well, this is called clipping because we've clipped off the top of the waveform. If the amplitude is too great, then they add together at certain points, and that's exactly what you wind up getting. And that makes for a raggedy kind of a sound. Now, with heavy metal groups, you probably want that, but not with the things that we're doing here. So that would be kind of a mistake. And in subsequent videos, I'll show you how to use this tool to cut down the amplitude or increase it at various points. This is just a lesson, however, in how these sounds actually work. And it follows on to the video that you've already seen that explains what sound waves are. What we're looking at here is the electrical representation of those same pressure waves that exist 
in sound waves. So I'll conclude this video now. Take a look at the next one where we'll do more experimentation here with Audacity.